Hello readers, my name is Miss Clyette. I am so excited to be learning with you today. Before we get started on our learning lesson, let's say hello with our welcome song. Hello readers, hello readers, how are you? How are you? I'm so glad to see you, I'm so glad to teach you. Hello you, you and you. Very good. I am so glad that you came to learn with me today. Readers, is it important for us to learn new words? Of course it is. Learning new words makes us even smarter. When you know a lot of words, it gives you lots of choices to use in writing and speaking. It helps you to better understand the text when you are reading. But what do you do when you are reading and you come across a word that you don't know the meaning of? Hmm, let's jump into the lesson and find out. Today, we are going to be word detectives. Do you know what a detective is? Mm-hmm, good response. A detective is a person whose job it is to find information out about someone or something. A detective finds out information by using clues. We are going to be word detectives, so we're going to use clues in the text to figure out the meaning of words that we don't know. In literacy, we call these clues context clues. Context clues are hints that the author gives us to help us to define an unknown word or an unusual word within a book. The clues may appear within the same sentence as the word, or it may be in the following sentence. All right, so because today we are going to be word detectives, we're going to need to write down the clues that we find along the way. We'll need to make a clue book. To do this, we're going to create our very own clue book. You will need three pieces of paper and something to write with. While you grab your items, I'll go grab mine. I'll be right back. paper and something to write with. I grabbed a marker, but a pen, crayon, or pencil is just fine too. All right, now let's get started working on our clue book. I'm gonna start by stacking my pieces of paper and then folding them in half, hamburger style. That's the short way. Would you look at that, readers? We have our clue book. Books always have a cover, so I'm going to write the word clue book as my title. Today, we are going to figure out the meaning of three vocabulary words from the book Deep Sea Explorers. You will be doing some extra detective work in your clue book after the lesson, so it's very important that you pay attention as we do our detective work in this lesson. Let's go ahead and put one of the words on each of the pages of our clue book. The first word is invent. When I snap my finger, I want you to say the word along with me. Invent, good job. Write the word invent at the top of the first page of your clue book. The word invent is spelled I N V E N. T. All right, let's turn the page to write our next word. Are you ready for your next word? Okay, the next word is submarine. I'm gonna give you a signal. When I snap my finger, I would like for you to say the word submarine along with me. Submarine. The word submarine is spelled S U B M A R I N E. Got it? Okay, we have one more word. Let's turn the page and add it in our, for our last page of our clue book. 
Our last word is submersible. I'm going to give you a signal. When I snap my finger, I want you to say the word submersible with me. Submersible. That is a really big word, isn't it? The word submersible has 11 letters. In order to fit the whole word on the page, make sure that you don't write too big. Ready? Okay. Submersible. It is spelled S U B M E R S I B L E. All right, Bird Detectives, we are ready to work. Today, we are going to be reading excerpts or parts from the book Deep Sea Explorers by Vanessa York. Remember, the purpose of using this text is to define the vocabulary words that we don't know the meaning by using the context clues. All right, detectives, let's get started. People need to use very special things to explore the deep sea, but they had to invent or make the things they need first. Hey, detectives, I think I heard our first vocabulary word, invent. Did you hear it? Let's investigate further. I'm going to reread the sentence that included our first vocabulary word, invent. But they had to invent or make the things they needed first. As I'm reading the sentence with the word invent, I remember that a context clue may appear within the same sentence as the unknown word. This is an example of the context clue or definition of the unknown word being found in the same sentence. Because of this context clue, I now know the meaning of the word invent means to make new things. Look at that word, detectives. We've already solved our first case. Let's go on to our second vocabulary word. Our second vocabulary word was submarine. I'm going to read a different part of our book to help us find the meaning of the word submarine. Ready, detectives? Okay. A submarine is a boat that can move and stay underwater. Today, there are submarines that can stay underwater for months at a time. Hey, detectives, did you catch the context clue? I think I now know what the word submarine means. Let's read the first sentence one more time. A submarine is a boat that can move and stay underwater. Detectives, what do you think the word submarine means? Did you say a boat that can move and stay underwater? That's exactly what I was thinking, submarine a boat that can move and stay underwater. Great detective work. I am really excited about learning the meaning of our last vocabulary word, submersible. This one is going to take our very best detective skills. Let's dive back into the text. This time, we're gonna swim on over to page 12. A submersible is smaller than a submarine. Submersibles can go even deeper into the ocean. They are used on short trips to explore the deepest part of the sea. Okay, detectives, this word is going to take a little more work than the other two vocabulary words. The meaning of this word depends upon our previous word, submarine. Remember, we defined the word submarine as a boat that can move and stay underwater. Let's break this down a little more. We'll look at the first sentence, at a, we'll look at one sentence at a time, not just the first sentence, and we'll talk through them together. Okay, the first sentence says, a submersible is smaller than a submarine. Remember, a submarine is what? <laughs> That's right, a submarine is a boat that can move and stay underwater. What do you think, detectives? 
Could we say a submersible is a small boat that can stay and move underwater? That's a good start, but I don't think that we're finished just yet. Let's go on to the next sentence in the text and see how we can edit the definition even more. The next sentence says, submersibles can go even deeper into the ocean. Do you think it's important to add that they can go deep? I think so too. Let's read the last sentence to see if we need to add anything else from that sentence into the definition of the word submersible. They are used on short trips to explore the deepest parts of the sea. Yeah, I think short trips is important to add as well. What do you think? Thumbs up or thumbs down? I think I saw more thumbs up, so we'll make sure that we include that in the definition. So here's what we have so far. Submersibles are small boats that move and stay underwater. They go deep into the ocean, and they are used for short trips. Let's put all of these important parts together to create our final definition for the word submersible. Submersible, a small boat that goes deep into the ocean for a short period of time. Perfect, now the definition for submersible includes all of the important information from the text. We learned three new vocabulary words today. We determined what the meaning of the word was by using the context clues and our very best detective skills. Let's play a little game to determine the meaning of a few unknown words using context clues. I'm gonna read a sentence. You're gonna tell me the meaning of the word based on the context clues in the sentence. Let's get started. Are you ready, detectives? Okay. The first word that we're going to define is a noise. Here's the sentence. Her brother made a lot of noise just to annoy and upset her. I'll read it one more time. Make sure you're listening. Her brother made a lot of noise just to annoy and upset her. In this sentence, does the word annoy mean to please or does the word annoy mean to upset? If you think that the word annoy means please, then touch your head. If you think that the word annoy means to upset, touch your shoulders. Let me see. If your hands are on your shoulders, you are correct. Annoy means to upset. Let's try another one. The next word is vanish. I'm gonna read the sentence. The magician made the rabbit vanish. I didn't see it anywhere. I'll read it one more time. The magician made the rabbit vanish. I didn't see it anywhere. In this sentence, does the word vanish mean to disappear? Or does the word vanish mean to hold? If you think the word vanish means to disappear, then touch your head. If you think the word vanish means to hold, touch your shoulders. Let me see what you think, detectives. Ooh, if your hands are on your head, you are correct. The word vanish means to disappear. Awesome job. You were able to figure out the meaning of those words with no problem. You were such wonderful word detectives. You gathered those context clues to solve the case of the unknown vocabulary words. Remember, you can always search for context clues in text to help you to understand the meaning of unknown words as you read. I am so glad that you came to learn with me today. I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, readers.